And welcome back, everybody. Thanks for sticking with us. Joe Botini is our guest. Joe is the official United County historian. We're talking about uh, lots of uh, historic things, including uh, the uh, creation of Utica, which started with uh, Old Fort Schuyler and grew from there. In fact, it was uh, Utica was called Fort Schuyler for a long time. Correct. And uh, in 1798, uh, they didn't like the name Fort Schuyler. They didn't think it was classy enough. Uh, you know, most places wanted a classy name, like Rome, a little classic. And so they met in uh, Bags Tavern, and uh, fathers, of course, women were not allowed in those days, and they had an argument over, and there were 13 names suggested, and the only ones I could find, Scanandoa was one, was the old Indian chief that supported us. Uh, they, some wanted to call it Washington after George Washington. Right. One man wanted to call it uh, Kent after his place in England, Kent, England. And so they were getting kind of raucous as a tavern, uh, activity in a tavern would get. And so the bartender, uh, as I tell the story, in order to save his place, th made the suggestion that they would each write their suggestion on a slip of paper, they would put them in a hat, and they all agreed that the first name pulled out of the hat would be what we call the new, new name for the community. And uh, so they all did so. And when the slip of paper came out, it was Utica. And everyone kind of looked at each other, Utica. Where did this come from? And of course, uh, the lawyer who put the name down, he, was, he did a lot of classical reading. Uh, would you believe his name? It just escaped my head. Was it Erastus Clark? Erastus Clark. Yeah. Boy, you know your history. Of course, you're number one historian. I'm the official county kind of historian, <laughs> but here's the historian. No, right no, here. no, no. Uh, no, no. Uh, You've got to have an official just for, for face and namesake. But yeah. uh, listen, I learned more history reading your column and your books and Frank DeMano's oh, yeah, material. Yeah. That's yeah. how I learned my, I'm not from Utica, so I had to learn yeah. someplace. Now you uh, taught school for a lot of years, yes? Yes, I did, 35 years in the eighth grade classroom. Was that Sequoia? I taught in Utica for 16 years and the Hartford for 19 years. Okay. Yeah. The, uh, uh, so anyway, we got the name uh, Utica and it carried on from there and then uh, 1832 uh, incorporation. Became a city. Yeah. Uh, we petitioned the legislature to become a city. Boy, it was booming in those years, wasn't it? Yeah, everything was going on. We were the center of everything, as you said earlier, the transportation center. Everyone had to come through here. Erie of course, Canal. He supplied the provisions for people going further west. So it became quite, and that's where Mr. Begg made all his fortune because he supplied, he was a, uh, a farrier. He'd just shoot horses for a while. And then he decided that being a holster would be. Uh, hosteler, hotel Ho owner. Ho yeah, hotel owner. A yeah. uh, little bit easier. Uh, would be better for him, make more money, so he put up the hotel. But uh, the people just flocking through. And Bag, uh, Bag's Hotel, a lot of people get confused. They think that the building that is down there next to the Children's oh, Museum this, is this, Bag's Hotel, but that's not. Joe, this, this really irks me because I'm down there quite often when visitors come through and they say, is that the tavern? because there aren't any historic markers. I've been trying for eight years to get the historic markers put up. You need that, it's important. And uh, that building is the Proctor Memorial Building put up by Mariah Proctor, right. 1933, uh, for uh, in honor of her husband who had died in 1920. He was the last proprietor of the Bag Hotel, the Bag Tavern. And so she put that up and it's a one room building, it's a gorgeous building and uh, sat empty for so many years. You and I discussed this before, that a purpose for the building needs to be found in order to maintain the building. Well, I must give the Elfin Society some credit because they really, three or four years ago, I was asked to go down to Bag Square and uh, tell the significance of the Bag Square corridor to this gentleman, not knowing who he was or what I was supposed to, I was sure, I'd love to talk about history, so I went down and uh, long story short, he was the representative from National Grid, and they got a $250,000 grant to restore some of the outside part of that. So the Elfin Society became the uh, re receiver of the grant. One person couldn't, you know, a single person can't get grant money. And so they oversaw the, the re restoration of the lighting, and what a job they did. Uh, Jerry Loomis was the Elfin Society, the great job he did. Of course, I was a little upset that they, they used stamped concrete instead of real brick like original. I wanted everything original mm -hmm. put back, and so we fought over that a little bit. The, uh, uh, we showed the map earlier, but describe where uh, Fort Schuyler was, where Utica started. It, if you would come down uh, 
Well, if you'd go over Main Street. Okay. From the Union Station, the train station, everyone knows where that is. You go east a block and a half, and that's where it is. It's behind what is now Pacemaker Steel. It used to be the Charles Millar Building. And oddly enough, we had, uh, I met with the county engineer there. Uh, Mr. Pacenti is really on board trying to get a, a commemorative park built there that, I, that I've been wanting for so long. Uh, he now calls it my park, and I, ke I keep it telling him it's not my park, it's, it's old Fort Schuyler Park. And it, the engineer uh, agreed that's where the, and it's county land. It's just a little traffic island right behind Charles Millar, perfect for a little commemorative park. The monuments are right down the street, 1,500 feet, bring them down, flagpole, a light, and you've got a park. There used to be, uh, way back in the day, there used to be uh, uh, a little park right there. Yes. And uh, they had some cannon out there. And yes, uh, yes. That, that park was made by the triangular of Main Street Park Ave, which doesn't go down there anymore. It's truncated at Stuben Park and 3rd Ave. And uh, that's as close as they could get to where the actual fort was. And they had a cannon on each corner. And they had uh, two monuments. Uh, the, the Oneida County Historical Society, which is now the Oneida County History Center, uh, I better get it right you around the board and I know you. <laughs> uh, they established the park and then in 19, that was 1883. In 1910, uh, the DAR, Daughters of the American Revolution, put a monument up. It's uh, four feet high, three feet wide, two feet thick, a great granite monument. And on it, it gives the in, uh, inscription on this site of Fort Schuyler. Then in 1912, imagine this, the school children of Utica took up a collection put up another monument in 1912. So you have these two beautiful, huge granite monuments and the three cannon. Well, when Route, Route 5S went through, it displaced the park and they didn't know, I don't know who did this, but I'd like to find out because I hit them over the head with a hammer. Uh, didn't know what to do with the monuments. They just placed them down at Bag Commemorative Park. Mm -hmm. And now those monuments are sitting there saying, on this site, oh, Fort Scholar. And they're off, they're off about two and a half blocks. It doesn't mean much to a lot of people, but in history, you have to be specific. When we come back, we'll talk some more. Joe Botini is our guest. He's the United County historian. Short break, right back.